And my name is Jeff Walter, and together we are the team that created Cannabis Pitch Live, giving you the opportunity to raise capital uh, uh, during our events where we bring athletes and cannabis together in a space that you probably have no opportunities uh, like it. Because what we do is we specialize in giving you the chance to meet with athletes that are interested in cannabis and have them become your business partners. We're happy to have Reginald Grant, our business partner, and former New York Jet, Joe Hager, uh, owner of Keys to Nature's Blessing, an edible company, and myself, I'm Jeff Walter, and I own a payment processing company in the cannabis space called CJ Ruff Consulting. Uh, so today, let's uh, start off and talk about the state of the industry, and I'm going to throw the ball over to Joe because uh, you brought up a, a couple of comments earlier in our pregame discussion about the New York State and the uh, legislature agreements uh, that are going through. So turn it over to Joe and we will continue the discussion. Sure, hello everyone. I hope you're staying safe and staying home wherever you may be. Uh, the state of the cannabis industry is definitely evolving. It is changing right before our eyes, even in the midst of COVID. Um, a lot of people are choosing different consumption methods and we are having to uh, change the way uh, that we consume. Uh, to Jeff's point, there is a lot happening this week in New York State. Uh, Cuomo came out and he said that having cannabis on the 2020 ballot and legalized is one of his top priorities. Um, me personally, as a New Yorker for the past 10 years, I will believe it when I see it. Uh, I am not that hopeful, but I am keeping my fingers crossed. Um, in uh, our friends to the north in Canada, Aurora Cannabis, the largest uh, cannabis producer in the world, recently reported earnings this past week. They ended up increasing, uh, or I'm sorry, decreasing their loss uh, for the first time in three quarters, and this has provided a lot of promise for the industry. Now, on the back end of this, their balance sheet is not looking good. So where the stock popped, uh, I believe, 50% two days in a row, um, there's a big pullback happening right now. Um, also this week in Ohio, they reported that the month of April had the largest sales on record to date. And furthermore, the first five months of the year has, uh, has seen the total sales that was equivalent to the year of 2019. So Ohio, uh, a very, very hot market right now. Absolutely. So I think the other mar market that's going to come up very soon is going to be Chicago. Uh, we've seen a trend in Chicago that, that the market there is building and growing and it's going to become much more diverse. A lot of people are understanding that market. Uh, there's a lot of research being done and, uh, you know, followed by that, I fully expect uh, New Jersey and Pennsylvania to jump on board with uh, New York, and, and they're going to have that on the ballot. And at least I know in Jersey, as I'm a resident of Jersey, that's going to be a ballot question this time around in November. I mean, if we have an election, uh, you know, so uh, as long as the COVID situation allows us to have an election, whether it be paper or whether it be at the polls, uh, this is a serious topic, folks, and we are right in the prime of what's going to happen. Right now, you've got an opportunity for an industry that is thriving. This is an industry of medicine. We have to treat it as medicine. This is not about people just running out there to get high. Uh, this is about people with the, with the pain relief ability that, that CBD and THC offer to people. Uh, and, and you have to know how to use it smartly. So one of the things that I always like to talk about every time we have a conference like this is how to microdose and making sure that you're not abusing this drug because just like any other pharma product that you can get at your CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid, or wherever you shop, you can abuse anything. So we have to make sure that you're doing it the right way. And one of the things that Joe is an expert on is how to microdose with edibles. So Joe, why don't we... Uh, talk about that and then also when you're finished that conversation let's bleed this into why it's important to microdose and then use cbd creams as a follow-up uh to you know maybe spots that are intrinsically harder to get pain relief 
Sure, absolutely. So uh, as Jeff said, um, for this industry to move forward, um, as a whole, we do have to start looking at it as uh, a medical field. Um, me personally, my company down in Oklahoma, the name is Nature's Key, is our THC end of the business, but then we also have Key to Nature's Blessing, which is our CBD end of the business. Uh, so as far as microdosing goes, uh, it's very important to, to address the crowd that at least I want to address, um, which is you know the 45 and over, uh, sometimes, you know, the people that weren't necessarily experimental back in the day, but are starting to either hear from friends, from family members that this stuff indeed does have some medical benefit and when used properly can be an alternative to traditional pharmaceuticals. Uh, so what I like to say, again, back to microdosing is the first rule of thumb is start slow and start low. Okay. Much like I say, you know, you can always put the steak back on the grill. You know, you can't undo it though. Okay, you want to think the same thing with edibles. Um, you know, these things, because they are processed through the digestive tract, can take sometimes up to two hours to process into your system, depending on your metabolism. So at this point, what I'd like to talk about is the difference between gummy and, and say a mint and or a hard candy. So the benefits of a hard candy is that that's going to tip, typically go uh, a little bit slower, uh, I'm sorry, a bit faster into your system. The reason being is because when you suck on that candy, it's able to sublingually get into your bloodstream. Uh, if you end up chewing up a gummy, it takes time to move through your digestive tract and enter into the bloodstream, okay? So from, from that standpoint, uh, it depends on the person. Okay, much, much like Tylenol, Advil, or aspirin responds differently to different individuals, your varying levels of THC and CBD are going to be unique to you and who you are. Okay, and only you know what is right for you. Okay, so Jeff had also mentioned that's, that's one of the internal ways in which we can find relief, okay, from, from the inside out. Now, a second layer to that that some people might be interested in trying is putting on a topical, okay? So generally people ex experiment the reverse way around. They say, oh, I, I don't wanna try that stuff, I don't wanna feel funny, so I'll, I'll just put some on my cream, my, my, my skin, okay? From, from a dermal standpoint, uh, THC, I, be I believe, don't quote me on this, but I, I've heard this multiple times, only about 30% of the THC within a product can actually penetrate the dermis, but it can't get into the bloodstream. And by that, I mean it can't create the intoxicating effect. So what I like to say is we have this first layer of defense, let's say my elbow, okay? We have this first layer of defense. I'm gonna rub this topical on both sides, okay? From the outside, as well as from the inside, because that's attached at two angles. You have to attack it from both ends to get to the center, okay? The second layer of defense is when we consume our edible, okay? That's, that's a little bit more of a slow drip. It will happen over the course of time and you will eventually find the relief. A topical, if you can find the relief, you know, will, will be you know, pretty, pretty instant within, within five minutes. So, uh, so again, that's kind of an overview uh, of microdosing as well as a first layer of defense, as well as a second layer um, of attacking whatever your unique issue um, problem uh, may be. Joe, let's talk about something else. Uh, what is the effect of people that like to take baths and then they throw the bomb in the bath? And, and uh, you know, when cannabis is absorbed through your body while uh, soaking, uh, mm -hmm. Many people don't even realize it out there that you do sell bath bombs and there is an opportunity for people to absorb some THC or CBD, actually what CBD in that case, mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, through something that they do every single day. So uh, maybe you could talk about that as another way of um, absorption. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just want to welcome Glenn really quick. Hey, Glenn, how you doing? Hey, welcome. Jimmy as well. And we will welcome Amy as well. Hey, Amy, welcome. 
So go ahead, Joe. I mean, you know, on that topic of absorption through the skin, through baths and, and sure. people don't sure. really so, exist. Absolutely. So uh, flu season uh, will be here before we know it. And uh, a wonderful way uh, to get rid of body aches and pains. Um, again, excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, again, is to try and, and go through a first line of defense, which is the dermis, the outer layer. Okay. And like Jeff said, you can do that through a bath bomb. You can do that through ointments. You can do it through creams. Um, and you can apply this on any part, practically any part of the body. Um, Amy can even speak uh, to the fact that, you know, there's even a sexual line of CBD products that, again, can increase blood flow. Um, it's, it's limitless. It truly is. We can drink it. We can smoke it. We can eat it. We can put it on topically. Um, that's what I'm so fired about, about this industry. It's the amount of applications that we still have yet to discover. Um, it is really cool to think, to think about all the innovation that is going to come from this. Um, Joe, why don't we give Amy a chance to say hello and, to talk about that new line that not many people even realize exists uh, because there's a lot of folks that are going to be listening to this on the podcast and th that we're going to be advertising this all over the place. So, uh, Amy, uh, can you hear me? Amy, your microphone's not on if because uh, you're not on mute, so we can't hear you. All right. All right. Uh, well, let's uh, welcome Glenn to the pick party here and, and uh, say hello to Glenn. Glenn, why don't you give us a little bit of background on yourself and uh, what your business is in the industry? Yeah, I'm not uh, technically in the industry. Um, just uh, Reggie had posted some things. Uh, I've been talking to Reggie for a little while on LinkedIn. And uh, yeah, so I just thought I'd tune in to the to what's going on in the industry. I know it's really uh, exploded here in the last year. I go to a lot of networking events and always see a lot of people, you know, out with their uh, products. Uh, I've been a CBD user with the cream on aches and pains. So yeah, I'm just, uh, my, my business, I'm in digital marketing. Uh, so I'm in that, that arena. That's cool. So let me take this one step further, folks. Uh, it's very important you know your digital space, your digital presence, having your ability to um, make your business aware that it's out there because uh, people are not aware that you're out there and that's not going to do you any good. So what we want to do is, uh, Glenn, maybe what you could do is take us through a little bit about your company for about two seconds here. 30,000 foot overview and maybe talk about your digital marketing uh, as it could pertain to a company in the kind of the space that, uh, and you know, give us the name of your company, tell us about it. And again, this will be recorded here. So we'll be able to post this for you as a plug for somebody that wants to do business with the cannabis space. And this is what we're all about. We're not all about just being in the cannabis space. We have a lot of good people out there that realize there's a good business to be done. Glenn, take it away. Yeah, yeah, we all can learn uh, from each other for sure. And that's why I'm, I joined in. But yeah, Blue Tech 360, we focus on client retention. So if you can give someone a reason. Um, so we, we build mobile apps for businesses. And we also have loyalty and text marketing programs. And the pur main purpose of that is that you collect, um, you know, customer data. You give them a reason to download the app or to sign up for a loyalty program. And uh, they sign up for that and you get their phone number and name and email address. And that allows you to continue to market to them over and over and over through text messaging, push notifications, and that type of thing. Well, that's awesome. So, uh, you know, that's great. And uh, I hope that uh, someone may contact you from our podcast here. And please join us every week as we have these because it's a great opportunity for you to join the industry, the movement, and be a positive influence to the movement. Uh, you know, yeah. moving on, uh, you know, what we, what we want to do is say hello to Zenobia. Thank you for joining in. Uh, you're, I know that you're on uh, mute there, Zenobia. So uh, why don't we talk oh, about... Zenobia is connecting. Let me chime in. Okay. 
Hey, Zenobia, go ahead. I'm running around. <laughs> Sorry, hang on. Let's see if I'm presentable for video. <laughs> She's looking great. <laughs> yeah, it's like a bad hair day, so I do the hat. Anyway, hi, everybody. Welcome, Zenobia. Yes. Here I am. Oh, am I supposed to talk more now? <laughs> well, how's your week been, Zenobia? What, uh, what have you heard rumblings in the cannabis world? Any news that, that you've heard of that, that sparked your interest that you, you want to share with the group? Or? Uh, a bit premature, but I uh, took on a client who is very much in uh, infancy. And actually, I met him at uh, the event in February. Yeah, um, Roll the Up Hammer. Life. The, oh, Roll Up Life. Roll Up Life. No Tie kidding. So, I love it. Yeah, so I'm hand-holding him through some things. So there's some very interesting things that I'm actually learning about East Coast cannabis. Well, uh, I'll, especially I'll in New Jersey. Yeah, oh, that's been very, very interesting. I'll, t I'll tell you what, if, if there's a time for his business to light up and, and there be a golden opportunity, it is right now. Yeah, so I'm trying to kind of hone and get him focused on at least the infrastructure. So I'm hope helping him with the infrastructure because he did he present it really, really well. And he'll mm -hmm. be a good front person, and he's a salesman for his business. So mm -hmm. I'm just trying to help make sure that the underpinnings are there so that, uh, because it's going to scale really quickly, mm -hmm. I think. That's um, wonderful to know. And folks are like calling him all the time now. Oh, I believe it. So Absolutely. All hands on deck. The girl asking about, okay, where's everybody with blockchain for some of uh, this stuff? And sure. so that's kind of like where I'll be coming in as well. Well, that's so, wonderful. Yeah, so and I'm uh, learning a lot about New Jersey cannabis and uh, how that works in, in terms of also the medical marijuana part of it and how many dispensaries there are, what the need is. He's done uh, really, really good research and homework. That's so, wonderful. Well, Zenobia, yeah. if you, uh, again, if you need Jeff or I uh, on the payment processing side, E-Check Solution, it's something that, you know, Jeff personally has been doing for the past five years. Um, I've been doing for the last year. Uh, we've seen a lot of success with it. It's, it's never uh, our, our point person. We can get him on the phone 24 hours a day. Uh, so if you guys need help on that end, please feel free uh, to reach out to us. And we'd love yes. to help. Yeah, I have you somewhere on my calendar to actually have an offline conversation so that we Wonderful. can have kind of like the meeting of the minds there. So please, uh, please, we'll be ready. We'll be ready. A little bit. Yeah, I have That's another, um, well, it's a non-cannabis deal, but um, I am doing introductions for a company called Piera Systems. Uh, shameless plug since I have the video on the mic. <laughs> And uh, I think in a way, this business is going to be recession, depression proof. Um, and what they do is they build a microchip um, integrated circuit that does micro analysis of air particles. So um, it's an OEM product, more or less, but there's, you know, there's a whole built in system with that. There, it's like a really, really interesting product. So that, Very of course, will fit within um, any of the air analyzing and air products like pure, uh, humidifiers, air conditioning, mm -hmm. anything that needs to monitor air. Yeah. So if anyone, uh, if you have an investor that might be interested in that space, let me know. That, that is so interesting, Zenobia. I, uh, just today I heard uh, from a friend, <clears throat> apparently, uh, well, an attorney rather, he was telling me that air vents within churches uh, a church that he knows specifically is starting to put UV lights in the actual air filters so that ideally when it's pushed through, it, those particles can be cleansed. I wonder if the technology that you're talking about can verify that that is indeed happening. Because his worry from a lawyer standpoint was, well, 
we can say this, but we're not going to, because then if someone comes to church <laughs> and gets COVID and dies, yeah. they can turn around and sue us. So yeah. um, do you think yeah, that? Interesting. Cause I think I did talk to them about that a little bit. Yeah. And yeah. I'm trying to think of what they said, not directly, but indirectly on the measurement side. Interesting. Yeah. So once it goes through, you can have a measurement before on one side and then have a measurement on the other side mm -hmm. um, and uh, do it that way. But um, anyway, you know, you can ask them all kinds of questions. I'm the introduction person, <laughs> <laughs> but it well, sounds like it might be worth the conversation. Yeah. Thank you for that introduction, Zenobia. To, um, yeah, that's going to be come into play with government organizations that have to monitor uh, air quality. And mm -hmm. then, of course, um, now we're on heightened alert about what's in our air and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, they're looking for 500000 which isn't a whole and lot. And Zenobia, the, the name of the company, one more time, please. Piera, P is in Paul, I-E-R-A system. Thank you. Piera out of Canada. Exceptional. But, uh, yeah so anyway oh, that's what here. well speaking of our friends from canada what a beautiful hello, amy. way we'll you. say hello to miss amy how are you Hi, doing how are you doing well amy geographically which province are you in i'm in ontario all right well good day to you good day <laughs> so we uh prior, prior to you hopping on we were uh talking about the many, many applications of CBD as well as THC. And I had mentioned that uh, you have a rather uh, interesting line and a way that uh, some people might not see applicable, but very much is. Could you maybe tell us a little bit about Stoked and Soaked as well as- uh, I thought you were gonna talk about the pets, Jeff, uh, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> yeah, no, we definitely- <laughs> No, we're gonna formulation. get to the good stuff here. <laughs> hey, get to the good stuff, Amy. We're going to leave the pets behind. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I've um, I've been working with the uh, the mother company. We'll start there, I guess. Uh, Plants Not Pills been in business about five years, um, based in the states. They've got a number of brands that come off of their uh, mother company, and one of them is Stoked and Soaked, um, it, which is a sexual enhancement CBD. So we've got stoked for the men and soaked for the ladies. It uh, is a completely vegan, organic, uh, natural health product. So it's got uh, CBD as well as seven other uh, natural ingredients in it. And um, it is just used the same as uh, any guy would use a Viagra or any woman might use some estrogen supplements or anything of that nature. It is a capsule, so it's not, a, not uh, topical or anything like that. And uh, yeah, we're having uh, really good feedback. <laughs> People are stoked and soaked about this product. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you know what, Amy? I don't want to leave the pets out of it. So why don't you go into the pet line too? Um, that's always important because, you know, the puppies are uh, in care needs as well. So yeah, you know, it's, um, it's a formulation that actually got a drug identification number here in Canada, which is crazy because CBD is not legal to sell. So uh, maybe somebody was asleep uh, signing papers that day, but they ended up with the first registered uh, product uh, for pets in Canada. So that's uh, kind of a uh, notable there for the company and, uh, and what it does, you know, they're using it for um, uh, obviously the, uh, the canine and, and uh, feline pets but uh, even horses uh, any of the farm animals mm -hmm. a lot of um, so Amy is it, uh, and um, yeah all available uh, through e-commerce tell us a little bit about that is it actually a pill that the pet would chew up or is it like uh, uh, something we would put in the water that like a tincture that you drop in the water or how do you how do you give it you to got the it. yeah it's got a bacon flavor so oh, some, it does uh, to it they uh they crave it in the morning so um it's just a tincture however they want to put it within their food and uh yeah you know for arthritis and a number of uh, other aging ailments um huge success making them comfortable and uh you know it's good for the quality of life too just to start you know while they're young like my son on a pediatric cbd so yeah awesome 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 that's great uh joe you know i think amy just brought up a um a valid point here that we have never talked about on this channel before 
And I'd like to go into the pediatric microdosing uh, and what, what you recommend as an organization to your patients. Uh, sure. That's something that is huge. And a lot of people fail to talk about it. So, Joe, I'll turn it over to you as the expert. Sure. Um, honestly, I, I might have uh, to kick this one over to Amy uh, as, as a, an actual expert that lives with it day in and day out. The only thing that I will say um, is, is, yes, we, we have some challenges uh, with regards to, uh, to children consuming cannabis. Um, obviously, no one wants their kids stoned. Uh, the children, majority of them who are coming for this type of treatment is because they've explored every single other avenue. Um, and this is all that is left. So, uh, but to that point, um, Amy deals with this day in and day out. I would love for you to, to educate this audience um, on the benefits as well as your personal journey as a mother. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, we actually, we were one of the first pediatric prescriptions uh, in Ontario, um, and we were ahead of the legalization, so there was a little bit of a stigma and a bit of a faux pas and a bit of a known. There's still an unknown. Um, I say that uh, parents know best, and I knew what we were doing before, which was uh, a series of uh, different medications. My son having a diagnosis of Fragile X has certain symptoms that, uh, you know, uh, come with that, ADHD. ADHD, anxiety, and uh, you know, behavioral. If any of those two go one or uh, one direction or another, so what was working uh, or, or what the doctor was prescribing was uh, you know Ritalin. Uh, we were on Vyvanse, and um, he also tried to give us on Prozac. And when my son was eight years old, so I said that's enough, and I started uh, experimenting myself. And um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of attention could have been probably brought to me if uh, you know I was uh, being public with that. But we did it uh, privately, and um, you know, I come out and I advocate with the story because again, you do know your children best. As I was slowly weaning him off of the Western Pharma, I was slowly increasing the CBD. So by no means was it an overnight process. Uh, by the time he was prescribed, uh, it was about a year after he was completely off Pharma, which is where we are right now. It's been two years uh, successfully. And uh, he, he is got uh, beautiful results. Results being that what he wasn't doing before is, 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 is there. So he was... Uh, not able to sleep uh, because of the Western Pharma. He was he was anxious at night because we had the high uh, high energy running through him with the amphetamines, and, um, and then you know his eating, his lack of appetite. So he's he's consistent. I wouldn't say that it uh, is a be all end all. Obviously, there's other therapies and other supports that uh, parents need to consider to go along with CBD, and we know that with cannabis. But um, the formulation is a 20 to 1. So it is a high, high CBD formulation. It comes from a uh, licensed producer, Organigram. And uh, they even have a program for uh, pediatric now. So they have some compassion care and everything is prescribed and licensed uh, to the child uh, directly. So that's how, uh, you know, that flow through goes. Uh, do I recommend parents do this? No. Do I, do I say this is the right way or wrong way? No. Uh, but I can tell that our story has been successful and that, you know, again, uh, for the things that we know in our adult bodies that it can treat and, uh, you know, alleviate, it it's the same for them, just on a, on a lesser scale and then removing all that uh, THC. Yo, how, Amy, um, Amy um, thank you so much uh, for sharing that personal story. I know that uh, a lot of people uh, have not heard those stories. And for me personally, uh, as an owner of an edibles company, um, you know, it, it is stories like yours, like uh, Charlotte, um, that that make us all realize there is something to this um, and that it is a viable, non-lethal alternative. So thank you very much for sharing. Also, I'd love to talk to you offline about Canada's uh, compassion program and how yeah. that's all structured. So thank you. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Uh, I was actually gonna ask you, Amy, um, before we got off that topic, topic what does your, your child take? Is it the tincture, is it the, the uh, a pill or is it an edible? How are you managing the dose? Because it's very important for people to realize yeah, what yeah. to do and how to do it correctly. Uh, so what is the, what is the uh, best method that you found for a child? Because we're all different and, and adults and children is so different. I don't know what, you know, yeah. your experience there. So 
you know, they should figure out how to make it a banana or cherry flavored like they do children's Tylenol, but he does take a tincture and uh, begrudgingly, of course, even though it's been this long, uh, it's still the blah afterwards, but uh, he takes 1.0 uh, milliliters, so he takes the full tincture at this point, but we started out, uh, you know, gradual 0 0.03 and kind of worked our way up from there. Um, some days I would say, you know, if he misses it, it's not a big deal. I don't notice any outward difference um but what i don't see going on in his body is really what uh you know keeps me consistent with the um the dosage every day every morning so joe you know i think we just heard something as an edible manufacturer maybe your next tincture should be a uh child flavored bubble gum yummy uh something along those lines uh you know maybe even you know i i actually like the i'll take royalties tincture. that's fine <laughs> I like that one tincture that you had on your, your uh, counter one night, which was the chocolate mint. Oh, yeah, chocolate oh. mint through, uh, oh, gosh, uh, Ten Tennessee Company, or no, uh, Virginia Company. Shoot, it's slipping my mind right now. But, yeah, I mean, you can add flavor in. You can add terpenes back in. I mean, terpenes are kind of dicey because they have a very, very strong uh, flavor profile, very piney, um, and can leave – quite quite a nasty aftertaste but having said that um and nature's key personally we're, we're starting to play around with that in a lot of our white label formulations and i can tell you firsthand the results are amazing and 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 for me i think that is is where the really uh individualized uh medicinal cannabis world is going and and, and that's going to be focused around terpenes that are unique to you to your person and your issues. Well, I'm, I'm going to guess, Amy, your child probably likes chocolate. So uh, I would definitely, when, when Joe remembers what that was, I only saw it on his counter <laughs> once at his place, but I can tell you this, uh, if, if you figure that one out, I bet you that might actually help her child out because what kid doesn't like chocolate in the morning, right? Right. I think Everything. the issue here in Canada is because you have uh, less regulation over your CBD. I mean, we are we are going 100% medicinal. So when it goes through that uh, physician network, that's where the complication lies of adding anything to anything. It is a base product. So yeah. um, to your point then, Jeff, uh, maybe a chocolate milk chaser would be okay at this point. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for, uh, for anything hemp-derived, uh, you know, sky's the limit, right? I, I would agree with that. I mean, this market is growing so fast as we explore and we keep growing the, uh, the business and the market and the health for people, which is the most important thing. And, and today's economy, everybody really has to realize that we're, you know, a lot of, a lot of Americans and a lot of people globally, as they watch this, they may be out of work. Maybe their spouse is out of work. But yet the cannabis industry is still strong. Uh, we're still a strong medical industry. So if people are looking for work and they want to jump into the cannabis industry, now's the time with the company, you know, in the, the, the countries and the world practically in a huge recession. Uh, and as this continues, we're going to see a financial trend. And those that have jumped in and taken their opportunities to either do one of two things, work with the cannabis industry, are going to benefit and then the other people that are going to own businesses in the cannabis industry are going to benefit so now's the time to really think how can cannabis be your friend financially for your own financial security your financial independence and have the opportunity to go from there uh and uh on that note uh let's turn it back over to reggie for a little bit hey guys i know we've been on here a long time but uh just want to spot out a few facts related to the cannabis industry. Uh, medical cannabis sales remain retained their footing in Ohio despite the volatility in the market. Um, sales of, of medical marijuana industry steadily improved in the first four months of 2020 despite the short-term hiccups caused in April. Roughly $50 million of medical marijuana was sold in Ohio in 2020. Just side of the 58 million that sold for the entire 2019. So we see a definite uptick. There was the big bump initially when we when we went into this COVID-19 thing, and now it's it's leveled out. But money is to be made, business to be done. Cannabis Pitch Live is your place to get all the information you need and connect the dots. I'm Reginald Grant. We're going to be moving on towards this, and we will see you again next Wednesday, same time, same station. And we'll make Wednesday our standard time to meet 
4 o'clock on the West Coast, 7 o'clock on the East Coast. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Have a Take great care, night, guys. Stay safe, wash your hands, and practice social distancing. Bye-bye, everyone. Great. Thank you all. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.